This is going to be part two of yesterday's video talking about the possibilities of nuclear weapons being used. Uh, yesterday I talked about what I would do in my area if a nuclear weapon was used over in Europe. And now for the second part of this video, I have one of my really good friends. He lives in Massachusetts. I have another friend. They live in Maine. I have some other friends that live just generally on the East Coast. I have driven the East Coast plenty of times. I've been in, on the East Coast way more than I would like. I know the size of the cities out on the East Coast. I know the general layouts of a lot of the cities on the East Coast. I know the road networks, like the back of my hand on the East Coast. And I can say this, if there was a nuclear weapon ever to be used on the United States, the East Coast would be screwed. Okay, there's too many large cities on the East Coast. The population of the East Coast is too damn high. If you live on the East Coast, first of all, one, my condolences. Two, my prayers. Three, if a nuclear weapon is used in Europe, my first suggestion, if you have the ability to get out of the East Coast and go all the way to the western United States, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not saying the Midwest, I'm talking about western United States. I'm talking Colorado, Utah, Nevada, New Mexico, Arizona. If you have the ability to get there, if you have a place to go, my first suggestion would be for you to leave the East Coast. Because I can tell you this right now, if the East Coast were to be hit by a nuclear weapon, everything on the East Coast would be absolute, complete, utter chaos. <laughs> It'd be absolute chaos. And uh, you could be looking at a grid down be looking at a lot of stalled vehicles on the highways. Now, we all know what happens when you, know, you have a, an accident on the interstate in a high population area. The whole freaking road comes to a standstill or close to a standstill. Now imagine if an EMP or a nuclear weapon were to be used in a high population area and you were somehow to survive and your car still somehow works now let's say 10% of all those vehicles on the road are now stopped you're on the east coast 10% of the vehicles are now working you are on a pretty much a gridlock road you're not going to be moving all the cars regardless if they're running or not vast majority of them are not going to be able to get out of there because there's going to be multiple accidents on top of multiple cars not working. It's just not going to flow. The road's not going to work. You're not going to be able to get through. So if you have the ability, if you have somewhere to go, get out of the East Coast. And that would be my suggestion right now as well. Even if that means going to a place like West Virginia, the, you know, deep in the, the mountains of Tennessee or something like that. Get out of the coastal areas of the East Coast. Stay away from I-95. Stay away from any interstate, any interstate. Just stay away from them. If you have the ability, stay away from any bigger U.S. highways. Stay away from those. If you 
the ability to get away from all these places that you need, you, I'm not gonna say you need to, but I would highly recommend you getting away from these places. In a time like this, self-preservation and the preservation of your family is going to be extraordinarily important. So get away from these hot areas, these high potential conflict zones. Stay the hell away from these places. When you're in one of these places, it, it only makes situations know it could it could definitely make them a lot worse for yourself and then you're putting yourself into a situation where if you have the ability to get out before things get too bad you could have avoided you know my friend over in Massachusetts like you know I talk to him quite often and you know I've lived up there that's where I met him when I was living when I was living up in Mass I will say this if it was just a straight EMP, no nuclear weapon, you know, no no fallout or anything like that, Massachusetts is an excellent, absolutely amazing place for natural resources. You've got a lot of fresh water, and you've got a lot of game to hunt. The issue is you got a lot of people as well. So, I can see, you know, New England, people might not want to leave New England because New England has a lot of natural resources. New England's got a lot of good stuff over there. You can survive in New England. Yeah, the winters are gonna be real harsh and they're gonna be, you know, the winters are gonna test you, but other than the winter time, New England has a lot of resources you can live off. You know, you can live off of perfectly fine. The issue is with that whole area, the East Coast in general, is you just have too many damn people. That's why I would recommend going out west if you have the ability. And the Midwest, you have a lot of potential targets. got a lot of high population zones in the Midwest as well. Talking about out west, you got Denver, Albuquerque, Las Vegas, Phoenix, and uh, Salt Lake City. You know, I'm not, I'm not including California. I'm not going to include Texas, but you know, if you wanted to include Texas, you can say El Paso. Stay away from those places, and then, you know, the western United States is a massive place. Uh, a lot of land, a lot of safer land in that kind of situation. That's why I recommend the west, you know, the western half, the western portion of the United States. I wouldn't recommend Wyoming or Montana or anything like that. They've got nuclear weapons and the winters get way too fertile. They, the, the wind speed in those states is enough to rip plants out of the ground. Idaho might be an okay area. Um, Eastern Oregon and Eastern Washington might be an okay place. As long as you stay away from the coast, the big cities. Now, the western part of the United States is probably going to be the more safe option when it comes to population. We all know that people are the most dangerous animal on the planet, and you're going to want to stay away from them, from the ones that you don't know in these situations. Now, let's say a nuclear weapon was used in the United States and you live on the East Coast. Well, at this point, it's already too late for you, more than likely, during the spring and summertime, maybe early fall. And I say this because of the average wind direction in the United States tends to go northwest or uh, northeast 
The wind usually starts from your southwest. No matter where you are, that is the average in the wind in the United States. All these storms that you see typically start in the west and then they make their way to the northwest, the north, I'm sorry, the northeast. You got the occasional storm that goes south or some some weird direction. You know, I've, I've seen storms go west. It's not very often. Typically, what happens in the United States is you can look at it this way. It starts in San Diego, it'll end up in New York City. Just look at it like that. You live in, let's say you live in Georgia and you have a storm starting in Texas. That storm will likely hit you. That wind direction will likely come in your direction from Texas. Look at it like that. A nuclear weapon was used in the United States. You live on the East Coast. You're already screwed. For the most part. I'm not saying everyone is. For the most part, in general, you're already screwed. Why I don't recommend living on the East Coast or the Northwest or the Northeast. Because of wind directions, everything ends up on the east coast or the northeast because everything tends to start in the midwest, southwest. I'm going to say the you know the Pacific Northwest is a little different. They've got their own weather. Especially things west of Snoqualmie. Everything seems to do its own thing. For the east coast in general, y'all get weather that starts from where I am on the west coast and in a nuclear situation all that radiation and fallout is going to go with the wind so it's going to go from the west starting from the west and it's going to go east no matter what you do on the east coast you want to leave after a nuclear event that's already happened in the United in the US. Guys, you have really no option other than to go west. Unless you have a boat. If you live on the East Coast, that is one of my serious recommendations is having a sailboat. A lot of people laugh at me a lot of people say why would you want a sailboat or do you know what boat stands for bring out another thousand yeah yeah I know boats are boats can be costly they can be expensive maintain them keep them well uh, you know keep them well maintained make sure the engine is the good make sure your sails are good because I'm not recommending any kind of any boat other than a sailboat what it is I'm not going to recommend any boat except for a sailboat make sure the engine on it is in good operating condition make sure you keep the engine keep up with the maintenance on the engine make sure it's got oil make sure it's got diesel or gasoline or whatever make sure the sails are in good condition not ripped torn or have holes make sure your lines are not frayed or broken or Ripping. Make sure you keep the hull clean, you know, clean the growth. If it's a metal boat or you got any metal on it, make sure it's not corroding or anything like that. You're going to be okay. So keep your cost down over time. If you live on the East Coast, I highly recommend you get a sailboat and learn how to sail. I will even go as far to say as if you live coastal on the East Coast, I would say you have to have, I okay, this is me. If I lived on the East Coast, I would have to absolutely have a sailboat. To hell with the size. I don't care if it's a 24 foot sail, uh, sailboat or if it's a 53 foot live aboard. I would have to have a sailboat. It would have to be in good condition. know and it would have to be in the water already 
I would have to keep up with the maintenance because if a nuclear event happened just west of me, I would be on that boat as soon as I possibly could. And I would head southeast, sailing far enough south to go around Florida, depending on where the targets were. I would base on, I would base my destination on that. And guys, I'm very serious when I'm talking about sailboats as a as a major prepping item. I would rather have, if I lived on the East Coast, I would rather have a sailboat than having an EMP-proof car. or having an EMP shielded home. That's where I place having a sailboat on my preps if I were to live on the west, or I'm sorry, on the east coast. And you know, even if I lived in California, Oregon or Washington, heaven forbid, I would still place having a sailboat higher than having an EMP shielded car or an EMP shielded home. Because you can live on them, they can take infinite fuel, wind, and you can fish off them. That's why I place them so high. And I would consider, or I would recommend everyone else that lives near a large body of water to consider having a sailing vessel as an important part for their preps, especially when it comes to nuclear.